Hello, Diana here, and here we go with part three. My laser arrived yesterday. I decided to purchase the Jinmitsu L8 20 watt laser engraver and cutter. I also purchased the rotary unit with it. I decided not to purchase the 40 watt because it can be purchased separately. And so, if I like everything that's going on with this machine, I can turn around and just purchase the 40 watt laser module separately, which is very exciting to me. I don't have to lay out that cash right off the bat. The 20 watt laser cutting, it said that it will cut 12 millimeters and one pass of pine wood and eight millimeters of black acrylic. Okay, I don't have 12 millimeters of pine wood. I did have eight millimeters of MDF, and I'll show you in a minute. It did cut through it. One pass at 100 millimeters per second at 100% power. They say it's 40,000 millimeters per minute. Now, I think that's an impressive number. From every one of the machines that I looked at, I didn't see any that had that amount of power. So, we're going to see if that works. I did bring it up in one of my tests up to 30,000. I didn't go up to 40 yet. But we'll find out. It says it has the optimal airflow. You can see right here. It only has a 3-inch fan, which I replaced that with the Cloud 9. I'll show you how I did that. Then it has risers that allows it to go up to about 80 millimeters. So, that's a really nice feature. The honeycomb is 4. 81 millimeters by 473 millimeters so it's a real nice solid good size um, I've been using light burn with it and it's totally fully compatible the laser module has three focal points which I really like uh, the problem is is that you have to remember to set it for the wood that you're uh, doing your test on. You have to remember to set your focal point. I haven't tried the plug and play engrave yet. We'll find out what that is. It has all the nice safety features. It's a beautiful machine. It is supposedly class one certified. When you put the risers up, I'm not sure if that still qualifies it as, as class one. And the built-in camera, it is a fisheye camera. So you have to remember it's gonna be skewed on the outside edges of your screen, which is takes a little getting used to. It says it was ready to go right out of the box. Well, it was a big box, I can tell you. And luckily, the young man that delivered the box looked at me and looked at the box and said, would you like me to set it somewhere for you? And I said, yes, please. And he carried it all the way back to the back room and set it on the table in the proper position for me so that I could just cut the box away from it. They give you a little project to cut out on a quarter inch, uh, no, I think it's a sixteenth inch piece of basswood. And so, since I was curious, I thought, okay, fine. Let's just cut it and see what happens. I've turned the sound off, and this is what happened. In all the studying that I did online, one of the curious things was I learned about kerf, which is how well pieces fit together when you're working with them. So you have to learn your kerf on your machine to make sure that it all slides together correctly. Well, they give you this little cute thing. When it was finished, it looked like a little ball that was supposed to all hook together. Well, it was so tight that there was no way that you could put the pieces together. And so, we cut out this cute little ball thing um, that you couldn't put it together because it was too tight. The kerf was too tight. Here is a video of the inline fan taking the smoke out. Does a really good job. Now, I'm going to turn the inline fan off so you can see what happens when it's off. It's off. There is a substantial difference.
Now I'm going to turn the inline fan back on. It has a selection so you can go as high as you want. You turn it back on, makes all the difference in the world. Doesn't take just a few minutes to suck up, suck out all the extra smoke that was created by having it off. I'm making the extraction box now. You can see these are the little divots or whatever you want to call them. They all go together so that it makes it easier to makes it a more sturdy box is what it says, but we'll find out. I don't even know if it'll work, but we'll find out. See you in a minute. I finished the extraction box and I'm doing my material tests and as you can see it's beautifully no no smoke room room smells fine the extraction box is down here you can see okay See if I can see that. I came out of the machine up here and down into the extraction box. And in the extraction box, came out of the extraction box and went straight into the inline thing. Then the inline fan, then the inline fan is going straight out the window. So far it's working beautifully. I still need to figure out how to turn off this little fan that's on the back of the unit. This, this little fan. I need to turn that off. It does seem to be interfering with the nice, beautiful, heavy flow of the inline fan. I just finished my test with a 16th inch balsa wood and as you can see just with the regular settings that come on light burn it was able to cut <laughs> just about everything then i did the engraving test and with the first set using the numbers from here it it literally just gave you all black and so i changed the numbers to go from the top number that was set in the first one and then ran the numbers up and it turned out pretty nice you you could probably do it if you wanted i don't think i would want to use it as a engraving wood but that would be a choice matter uh, my point was it worked fine i'm not sure what wood this is i think it looks like it's basswood but i wanted to play around with seeing what would happen when you did a engraving with the basswood and as you can see there's a lot of things that you'll have to work here. I mean, this is my first try. I noticed that it, it's really dark in the eye area, which you would have to lighten up. My settings, I don't know. I haven't played with them yet. I was just wanting to show you that I have tried the engraving on basswood, and it, it's going to work. I just need to prepare the drawing so that it will make the right um, type of engraving look that I want. I just finished my cutting test on a quarter inch MDF. Most of the things that I saw online told me that the setting would be 100 millimeters per minute and to do seven times around. Okay, so my first time I went around, I set it for three times and it 
set on fire fairly quickly around the end of the second time. So I backed it down to just two times and again started burning. And I thought, well, you know, it looked like it nearly got all the way through with one pass. And so I ran one pass and it did. It got all the way through except for this little teeny, you can see, um, you can see there's a little teeny part right here where it was kind of catching. But with a little help, it popped out. I think you could probably, it's pretty smooth all the way around if you look at it, except for this one little spot. So I think if you did it on the back, I think if you went in and took a little knife or something, I think you could probably have a very smooth cut. I was impressed. <laughs> <laughs> sure didn't take seven cuts. So now it's time to literally just get everything going. We have it all set up. It's working really good. There are things, a million things to learn. My part four will be to show you some of the little projects that I have completed. It may take me a little while, but I'm very excited. I'm very pleased with my purchase. I'll see you in a little while. Have a good day. Diana.